It stands, superbly sighted, a piece of the essential England, Chartwell Manor, in Kent, the lovely garden of England. For more than 40 years, the country home of Sir Winston Churchill. His personal home, as Earl Mountbatten points out. Chartwell was Sir Winston Churchill's very private retreat, where he could relax, paint his pictures, build a wall, play with his budgerigar, feed his fish, and think. And who can doubt that some of his great decisions were made as a result of his chance of thinking quietly here at Chartwell. I knew Sir Winston for more than 50 years, and yet when we first met, I was a young naval cadet, and his name was already a household word. Here at Chartwell, he wrote most of his memoirs. And what a story he had to tell. What a story indeed had this inspirer of the great men he led through peril to victory. In one form and another, the epic of our century is recorded at Chartwell. In Sir Winston's study, for all to see, for the house is now open to the public, hangs his garter banner, once in St George's Chapel, Windsor. The dispatch box he used when Chancellor of the Exchequer in the middle 20s. Often alone, sometimes in company, he grappled here with the problems of war and peace. At the desk, where he labored for many years, he sat for the last time two years ago. A model of the Mulberry Harbor at Aramanche is in the library. That artificial harbor was his own conception. Grasping the problem, he said, it must go up and down with the tide. His own history of the war stands on the shelves. The drawing room is steeped in the atmosphere of his family life and of his many interests outside the realm of politics. As a racehorse owner, for instance, here he would play Bezik, usually with Lady Churchill. And of his beloved Clemmy, there is a portrait painted in World War I. We married, he once wrote, and lived happily ever after. This is Lady Churchill's bedroom. She was his loving partner for 57 years of very happy marriage. Through the years of dazzling promise, through the long period of frustration when no one heeded his warnings, till triumphant, he bestrode the free world. At Chartwell, you feel that his presence lingers. It is as if he had not departed. When it is quiet here, you can almost imagine you hear his voice. He knew that for an active man, the best relaxation is a hobby. He learned to lay bricks, building this wall in the odd hours of seven years. Chartwell is now open to all, to the nation he loved and toiled for. Pervading this place evermore will be the immortal memory of the man who compelled our unbounded admiration and deep affection, Winston Churchill. Winston loved Chartwell. When he crossed his own front door, he could throw off the cares of state and say with real feeling, it's good to be home again. <laughs>